and uh, welcome to my youtube channel uh, today we will be talking about something every python developer should know and uh, today the topic that we are going to discuss is about the puppet guidelines uh, so uh, basically that is the official style guide for the python code uh, so today we are not going to talk much about the code rather than you know how to write the code and what guidelines we should uh, remember so that you know we can write out a clean code which is understandable you know uh, the company where you are writing the code uh, even if you are not part of the company or if you have left that company the other coder basically which comes to the uh, other company uh, is able to understand your code uh, so that is uh, the uh, uh, general puppet guidelines uh, so what is uh, Puppet? Uh, Puppet is uh, basically it stands for the Python Enhancement Proposal and Puppet defines the style guidelines that every Python programmer should follow. Right. So uh, it's not mandatory. Uh, your code will still run without it. Uh, but with that, your code is going to look beautiful. Uh, it is going to be uh, observed in a prettified format. Right. And uh, there are some core Puppet rules that uh, we need to remember. Uh, before uh, we uh, uh, start writing the code for Python, right? Uh, this is one of the uh, very, uh, you would say, a topic that is rarely discussed. Uh, and I don't know why, but uh, uh, this particular topic should be discussed um, in terms of, you know, uh, helping out the beginners or uh, the guys who are, you know, or the developers who are very new to Python, uh, they should go through this particular uh, practice. Not only in, you know, Python, uh, I believe there are uh, Puppet guidelines for the Python, uh, but there would be some other guidelines as well that should be followed for other coding languages as well, whether it be it uh, C++ or any other language uh, that is required. Right. Uh, so coming to uh, coming back to the core Puppet rules. So the first rule is the indentation. So uh, Python would never work without the indentation, right? If the indentation is incorrect, uh, your code is uh, not going to run, right? So let's say uh, if you are writing a certain function, right, which is defined by a def, then in that case you need to take at least four space per indentation level, right? And uh, when you are coding. Uh, nowadays, people are using VS uh, 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 Visual Studio Code uh, or uh, they are using some other platforms, right? So, uh, if you are uh, using those things, I think the indentation and all is helpful. But when you are, you know, purely writing your code inside the Linux platforms uh, uh, without any help of these, uh, you know, uh, PyCharm and the VS Code, then it becomes a bit difficult. So, you should never use tabs because you know inserting tabs inside your codes that you are uh, typing in Linux or Python uh, is going to create issues and uh, at the indentation level it is going to cause problem you will not be able to even find out even though your indentation would look like you have given four spaces but since you have used the tab the code is not going to run right and it is it will still keep on pointing you at the particular line you know where you have used the tab right so that is the first guideline uh, coming to the second guideline is the line length, right? So <clears throat> we need to make sure that uh, in every particular line for the code that we are typing or maybe the comments that we are writing, right? So uh, we need to keep the line under 79 characters. If a line is basically too long, uh, break it using the parenthesis, right? So let's say you have a long test, right? And uh, uh, you can see the example that I put up over here. Like uh, this is an example of how you should break a uh, long line. So basically it was crossing 79 characters. So I, uh, uh, you know, uh, decided to basically make it a bit uh, uh, shorter, right? Uh, pardon me, I forgot to use a hash out, right? So this will be a hash that would be used over here, right? And uh, mm, and uh, uh, this is about it. So basically, uh, the 79 characters per line is uh, one of the other guidelines of the PEP, right? Uh, then uh, the third point the, or the third core concept that we need to follow about the PEPIT guidelines are, uh, you know, uh, the blank lines. Uh, uh, so basically, we use the blank lines to separate the function. Uh, so uh, generally, uh, when you are trying to, you know, uh, separate the function. So basically you should have 
uh, the difference of two between uh, top level functions or clauses and uh, you should have one between the methods right so <clears throat> as you can see currently there is a difference of one and two right so there is a two uh, between uh, the top level functions and uh, it can be one between the methods right so if there is a method and you are calling that method with another method then probably you can try to keep you know one difference one space uh, should be good enough so two or one should be good uh what should be the import order right so sometimes you would see people uh, calling import uh, at just at the top of the def method you know where they uh, realize that uh, they had to use this module but this module was not present uh, but ideally uh, the best practice is that you know if you are calling any module or if you are trying to import any module inside your python code that you are writing or the uh, script that you are writing so uh, any third party packages or local import should always be kept at the top right it should always be reflecting at the top it should never be called you know uh, between the lines or uh, uh, at the bottom of the you know where the code is going to end then you are writing it over there it should not happen that way import should always be kept at the top right uh some other points uh and this is the most important point the point number e is the naming convention you know where uh, people uh, miss to uh, uh you know write uh self-explanatory names so uh, i have been coding for around 14 years uh, in python and i have seen people who are writing the code uh, where you know they would write a for loop uh, for um, a in b uh, or for a in range of this um, print this right so basically they are not giving a coding uh, proper naming convention you should proper give uh, you should give a proper naming convention for each and every variable you are trying to create not only for each and every variable for each and every function for each and every class so that you know whichever coder you know uh, because there are multiple stages of development right so once you have created and developed the code uh, so after some point of the time the code is going to be maintained and maybe you are not that guy who's going to do the maintenance of the code right maybe it would uh, get transferred from the um, you know uh, the production team uh, to the maintenance team right so in that particular case the person who's going to maintain your code should be you know he should be able to make out what you have written over there right so naming convention is one of the most important things right and what are the naming conventions that should be followed right so basically variable and function can be you know a lowercase with underscores that is one of the uh, best ways to do that then uh, there is uh, uh, for the classes you know when you write my class your class or whatever class you are trying to write it should be pascal case so that is the other thing and uh, uh, when you are trying to mention the constants or the global variables right that should be mentioned with the upper cases that is the best way to write the uh, you know uh, uh, the code with the proper papet guidelines right uh, please don't give unnecessary spaces that is one of the concepts of the papet guidelines like uh, the white space rules where uh, unnecessary spaces are totally hated and uh, it should uh, not be uh, put up over where like you know you know the sentence has been complete or maybe uh, you know uh, the function that we are writing has been complete but still you know we are giving unnecessary two to three spaces just for the sake of it uh let's not set a bad example over here right uh try to keep the uniformity inside the code right um, basically the white space x equals to 5 you can see and y is equal to 10 is now looking pretty bad even the code is going to work right there is no problem with that but uh, uh it still looks bad right if you see the good example the uniformity in the code mm -hmm. would reflect if you do not keep the unnecessary spaces right last but not the least uh there are a couple of uh, more points right uh, i will discuss uh, the most important point is the comments right so uh, we were talking about the naming conventions right and it is basically helpful for the developers who are transferring their code from uh, uh, the uh, 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 production team to the maintenance team right so now uh, in in addition to you know uh, writing a self explanatory code you need to provide the uh, comments also so that the uh, developer who is going to maintain your code or who is going to handle your code in the future uh, basically will come to know you know what you have written inside that particular uh, uh, use case or particular code or particular application that you have developed right no matter what you have created uh, but it is going to be uh, much helpful for that particular coder right so 
write meaningful and proper comments and use doc strings for the function right so basically you know you can use either a hash sometimes people would write a hash uh, but i would recommend uh, writing it in terms of triple quotes right so use doc strings or strings to uh, make your code uh, fully reflecting right sometimes you can write multiple uh, multiple lines of comments to uh, give a detailed explanation of what code has been done that is you know very well uh, respected and uh, the developer is going to handle your code will be able to know you know uh, what you have written inside the code right uh uh, sometimes you know uh, nowadays uh, people really don't care about it because you know uh, in today's technology when we are using AI we also have the auto formatters right uh, we have uh, pylint is there uh, which is somewhat manually run but nowadays inside VS code and PyCharm you know there are uh, places you know when you will write improper code it would automatically highlight it whether there is an indentation issue or whether there is you know a camel casing issue or a pascal casing issue so uh, it would get automatically reflected and then you know uh, you can uh, just use them right it's built inside the uh, uh, software development engines or the SDEs you know you are using right uh, whether be it PyCharm or VS code right but you can still go ahead and install a black and flake it you know to uh, uh, identify these things and just fix it out without any you know uh, 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 multiple things to remember right uh, so uh, the formatters were you know the last part uh, to you know uh, like write a clean code but you know having said that uh, uh, this is not the complete part yes but uh, today we have discussed the most important parts of the code right uh, in the uh, in the end I would like to say that you know this is uh, again uh, one of the topics that uh, are uh, very rarely discussed inside uh, most of the python tutorials uh, but uh, Pepid basically are uh, is one of the key things you know which helps you follow the guidelines properly and uh, 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 the one point over is you know whenever you write the code be it python or any other language uh, if you follow that particular uh, uh, codes uh, coding guidelines it is going to look very professional in case of python yes Pepid. if you follow it it is going to look very professional and uh, uh, lastly, uh, please give a thumbs up if you uh, think that uh, uh, the proper things were uh, shared with you and uh, this uh, video has helped you out and it has increased your knowledge in terms of, you know, learning Python and uh, uh, just a quick, uh, you know, recap of the checklist. Uh, uh, we uh, talked about some of the core functionalities uh, where we first started with uh, the indentation then we move to the line length then we talked about the plank lines we talked about the import how you need to put up the import then we talked about the naming conventions which is one of the most important part uh, how you should follow the white spacing uh, to make your code look you know pretty and uh, uh, uniform in structure uh, comments on uh, uh, doc strings right uh, auto formatters and uh, that's all right so uh, uh, thank you uh, for uh, spending time in watching this video and I will uh, surely see you in the next video. Thank you so much.